Hi, welcome back to our channel. In this video, we're going to be giving you a very nice tour of all of the options and features Everest Panel's broadcaster dashboard has to offer. So similar like to the video we did for the admin side of things, we're going to be focusing mainly on each of the options here on our left hand side and going into a little more detail about each option, what it does, and I'm also going to be showing you how to upload music and just giving you pretty much a little more idea on how to do a little bit more of the options here available to our broadcasters. So once we log in, similar to the admin dashboard, the very first page is always going to be an info page. We're going to hear at the very top see disk usage. It'll show us how much space we have available for our cloud streaming, for auto DJ, our bandwidth usage. Right at the very bottom of it, we're going to see current listeners in real time. So like the admin dashboard had a current listeners in real time for the whole server, broadcasters limited to their station. So you can have a live view of how many listeners you have at that moment streaming. If we come down or scroll down just a little bit, we're going to see a current listeners on map, which is nice because what we can do is we can see pretty much our current listeners on the whole map. So let's say we have 50 listeners in Nepal and 50 listeners in the United States. We're going to see here all of these pins light up in pretty much the United States and Nepal. And that way, country list is also going to show their flag icon for Nepal and the United States. So if we have different listeners in Mexico, Colombia, things like that, or places like that, we're going to see their map light up with their pins. And we're also going to see their icons over here with the amount of listeners from each country. And we come back up, we're going to see a current listeners tab and past tracks tab, which basically will show us the current song playing at that moment in Auto DJ when we set that up. Or when we're live streaming, it'll show us the current song streaming. And if we have the metadata correctly encrypted, it'll show us the album artwork and things like that. If we also wanted to see, for example, what song played 20, 30 minutes ago, a listener is like, hey, quick question, what song played 30 minutes ago? You can click on past tracks and you'll be able to see here all of their information of the songs that played 20 hours ago, played 21 hours ago, a day ago, things like that. So pretty much current track and past tracks is a great way to see what songs are playing live and what songs played recently. At the very top of the dashboard, before we start moving on to different options, we're going to be able to change our language. If we click on the icon here, we're able to select different languages. We have time zones. And then at the very top right, we click on this icon. We click on my profile. We're able to pretty much change our profile icon, our avatar, our email, our time zone. And we can also reset our password. So the dashboard of the very first page is always going to be an info page. It's pretty much exactly like the admin dashboard. Just this is our info page for our broadcaster so this gives, gives you a great view of how much space you have available in the cloud how much your bandwidth you're using your current listeners in real time and what's playing and at the very bottom before i start moving on as well we have a sticky player so let's say we want to know what's live right now we're going to hear the station what we can do is click on play here and it'll automatically start playing our station and then we are able to select different channels if we have multiple channels or multiple format links, we can select them here and we can pretty much that way transfer and start listening to each one of them. So once we're done with this page, we're going to click on channels and we're going to be transported to the channels tab, which basically allows us to create different format or different bitrate links that all stream the same content. So sometimes you need a link that's playing an MP3 64 kbps. You can do that or you can achieve that by clicking on add new and channels and selecting the format. We have MP3, AAC++, AAC LC, FLAC available and the bitrate. We give it a title, we can give it a listener's limit. Let's say we want this link only to be able to have 40 listeners at a time. We would click forward here. And then the great thing is server type. Let's say we need a link that's in Shoutcast. We don't have to create the whole station over again. What we can do is we can create a link specifically in Shoutcast or Icecast and the format we'd like. Then advanced allows us to enable proxy URL and change the admin password. And proxy URL basically creates a new stream link that we can use with pretty much a proxy. That way we can use it for apps, website players, things like that. If require a proxy, you can create that or enable that option here. So once we're done with this option, we're gonna click on Auto DJ and here we're gonna see Media Manager, Playlist and Schedule. So Media Manager would be where you upload all of your Auto DJ content, your music, your files. Here you can see we already created a few folders and we click on server underscore 32, that's our default folder. We can create new folders and pretty much we can upload music. So let's say we wanted to upload music right now. What we would do is I have this folder here of music. I'm gonna add these three songs, Come and Get It by Scott Holmes, Echo 2 and Little Idea. I'm going to highlight them. I'm going to drag them over here where it says drop a file here or click to select the file to upload. I'm going to drag them or let them go right there. And we're going to see that automatically get started. They start getting added to the dashboard. We're going to give it just a few seconds. This all depends on your internet speed. 
how fast it goes and in above it tells us available free space in this case we have unlimited but let's say you have one gigabyte it'll pretty much give you an idea of how much space you have left once you start uploading the music you can see that already one of the songs has been uploaded correctly the second one was uploaded perfectly and we can see here on the left hand side i can see here this song here and this one have already been uploaded and just like that, all our three of our songs are uploaded to the Auto DJ. So the cloud, it's a very simple process. We can click on this option here and it'll open up our file manager on the computer. You can drag them. Or the great thing as well, you can upload them through FTP with the program like FileZilla by logging in with the details here. You can change the password, show the password, all of that pretty much from this option here. So you have three ways of uploading music, dragging it here, clicking on this and it'll put it in your file manager or FTP. So it's very easy to upload music. It's not hard in any way whatsoever. Then we're gonna go to the playlist option. We're gonna see here that we have three different playlists or two different playlists, sorry. And we have the default playlist and the test. So what we can do here is we can create new playlists and that way we can assign, for example, we can create this playlist and we don't want it to play the same song pretty much every five, 10 minutes. We can do that by clicking on this option, enable, disable, avoid same artist from repeating. We can enable, disable here. We give our playlist a title. Mode shuffle or sequential, pretty much meaning shuffle goes from song one to 15 to 30 or sequential that goes in order. One, two, three, four, five. Then we give it a tag. Let's say this playlist is only for IDs. We would type IDs, enter, and pretty much all set. The playlist has the tags for IDs. Then we can import a playlist. It's optional completely. Then we would just click on add and automatically a new playlist would be created. So then we have scheduling. Scheduling is great because it goes in very, very nice detail of what we can do pretty much with scheduling. So here, the first tab schedules shows us pretty much what's live. Right now we have a default playlist with three minutes and 52 seconds of content. And right now it's streaming nonstop. Let's say we, we created a new playlist. We can click on add new schedule, select type. We have the playlist option, the restream and playlist rotation. So playlist would be our playlist. We can click on it, schedule type, nonstop is 24 seven daily. We can select the days of the week we'd like, the start time and end times, and then one shot. One day of the week or one time that we want this playlist to play, we can select the option here. Then at the very bottom, we have interrupt feature. So interrupt says hit your yes. If chosen, this next schedule playlist will start at the time exactly and will interrupt the course previous playlist. No, if chosen, this next schedule playlist will start at the current track completed in previous playlist. So what happens here is, for example, we have a playlist that we want to play at Friday at 4 p.m. What we would do is we have two options. Do we let it interrupt? Yes, pretty much at 4 p.m. on the dot, it starts playing. Whatever's playing at that moment, song, program, whatever, automatically fades out and pretty much begins our playlist. Or if we click no and interrupt, what it does, it'll get added to the queue. And then for example, let's say at 4 p.m. the song still has four minutes to end. Pretty much as soon as the four minutes pass at 4.04, the song or the playlist that we've already programmed or scheduled here will begin to play. So another thing, the great thing Everest Panel has to offer is under schedule type, we have restream. We can actually restream a different type of station or a different station just with their stream link. And then we have the option to nonstop, daily, or one-shot schedule. So through the scheduling tab, we're going to be able to schedule playlists and pretty much stations all through these tabs right here. Then calendar just gives us a broad view of all of the programs and all the scheduling we have set up. Then in the DJs tab, this page will allow us to create different types of DJs that will be able to go live to our station pretty much with their own username and their own password. If we click on add new, we're gonna see that the option here, we're gonna give them a name, we can give them a password, encoding stays the same, and then schedule. If we only want this DJ to play daily, we can select pretty much the times and the end times, the start time and end time, sorry, and then pretty much weekly, we can select Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday for them pretty much to go live. So DJ basically allows other people to go live to our station pretty much with their own username and password. So you don't have to give them your personal information or your personal encoding information. They will have their own. So you can pretty much also control that here by enable disable. You don't want this DJ to go live anymore. You could just click here and pretty much it'll automatically disable them. Next tab is going to be jingles. So jingles is going to be spots, top of the hours that we want to pretty much program to go pretty much live every 10 songs, every 10 minutes. Pretty much all of that is going to be handled through the jingles tab. Then we have social relay, the tab. Social relay is great because Everest panel is one of the only panels that allows us to stream to YouTube, Facebook, Telegram, all at once through their dashboard. So all we would need to stream to these social medias would be our stream key. Pretty much once we have the stream key, we can just assign it here. 
we can enable it and that way we're able to stream to social media through our Everest panel dashboard. So all we would need is just like I mentioned, the stream key to each of the dashboards, then you just click enable and that way you can also select your picture and you can select the channel you would like. Let's say we only want the MP3 128 link to play, we would select it here and that way that will automatically start streaming and we can handle that. I do want to note though that social media streaming up pretty much uses more CPU. So you have to be very careful if all of your broadcasters are using pretty much the CPU option or the social media relay option, they're going to be using a lot more CPU usage. So another great feature that Everest Panel's broadcaster dashboard has to offer is YouTube download. We can actually download music from YouTube to the dashboard without having any extra steps. All we need to do is pretty much add the YouTube URL or the YouTube playlist URL. In this case, I believe I have one copied here. Let me try it. Perfect, just like that. I'm downloading this song here that's pretty much a copyright free, Sora Roa. We click here, download, and in just a few seconds, our, we're gonna see that the Everest panel begins downloading the song. We can see here it says downloading, and perfect, just like that, it's done. If we go to Auto DJ Media Manager, we're gonna see a brand new folder that says here YouTube downloads, and pretty much it says it right here, Sora Roa. No copyright music webcam. So pretty much what we just did was we just downloaded pretty much music from YouTube straight to our our dashboard. So instead of having to download the MP3 to our computer, then uploading to Everest panel, we saved a good amount of time just going to the YouTube downloader option and entering the URL. That way, pretty much, you can download music or playlists directly without having to download and do the whole middle process of downloading to your computer then Everest panel. You can do it all in one step really quickly by just clicking on YouTube downloading and posting the link. Current download task and last download task just basically gives us a record of what's downloading and pretty much our previous downloads from YouTube. Crossfade tab will basically allow us to um, edit the crossfade. Pretty much when a song ends and you start noticing the volume automatically goes down and then pretty much a new one starts and it goes back up, we can edit that from here. We have two options, first fades out, next fades in, and then first fades out, next starts with normal volume. So pretty much what happens was this: if we select the first option, the song will start to fade at the very end and then once the new song starts, it'll automatically start going back up volume. And then if we click the second option, what will happen is the first song will automatically fade out, the music will get very low at the bottom, and then the next song will automatically start with the normal volume. And if we want to edit the crossfade to our liking, we have that option here in seconds. We want to give it seven seconds, let's say, pretty much to start going back up with the volume, we would edit that here to our liking. Another great feature is the recording tab. Recording allows us to record auto DJ, live stream, or both through Everest panel. We can select daily recordings, weekly recordings, or non-stop, which will be 24-7. So this will pretty much allow us to record programs and they'll automatically get saved to the folder, our default folder, server underscore 32. You might have a different number, server underscore 25, and then the recording folder. So we'll be able to use these recordings and then in a future date, we can actually program them as well in the scheduling tab. So recording allows us basically to record live DJ programs, auto DJ, or both, to our liking and then use it is a file in our dashboard. Quick Links is basically going to give us our information to go live up here the very first top option live and DJ source connections. We're going to see here if auto DJ enabled we use disk configuration for our encoder. If auto DJ disabled we're going to use disk configuration and then pretty much our three links or our three channels we've created they all have their own streaming options. So pretty much let's say you're using but we have but right here we would click settings add and then all we would do is right here, select Shoutcast, Icecast, the address would be the IP, port, and then password. We would enter all of these three information or all these three details. We would enter it here in the encoder and then pretty much click on add. And then you would click on play and automatically go live. So the quick links, first tab, live and DJ source connections is going to give us our information for our encoder. Then the default channel, my radio and my radio are the channels we've created. We're also going to be able to create or see our Windows Media links, our Winamp links, our iTunes Real Player, our Web Player, Dark Web Player, and a Custom Player URL. All of these are going to be players where we can click on and start listening to our station, our direct stream URLs, pretty much for iTunes, Novex Radio, directories that we need to use our stream links. We're going to be able to find that here. Proxy, we have it available or set up. Then the Icecast, pretty much preview page or the information page and then the admin dashboard login information to be able to see the details of our station stream. Then URL branding tab basically allows us to 
customize or set up our own domain. In this case, we're using mydemo.everestpanel.com, but you can select your own or assign your own, but you make sure, please, that you point your domain or subdomain to server IP before adding it. Geoblocking and IP blocking allows us geoblocking mainly allows us to block countries from listening to our station we would just click on countries let's say we wanted to block argentina from being able to listen to our station we would click on this option and like it says here block selected countries or allow selected countries and block the others so pretty much geo blocking allows us to block countries from listening to our station and then ip blocking similar to geo basically allows us to block ips from listening to our station if we notice that ip is listening at a very long time and we don't want them to listen anymore to our station we would find their ip or pretty much get it from the statistics tab and then we pretty much assign that here comment we don't want this listener to listen to our station and then just update and pretty much it'll block selected ip address from listening to your station now the widgets tab is going to be pretty much the link to the players that we can upload for our station pretty much to our website so our listeners can listen to our stream from our website we're going to have six options here we're going to have the winning player dark player which is very nice and a lot of clients and pretty much broadcasters have mentioned that's very pretty and they like it simple player sticky player online and offline status when we're online and offline this will pretty much change it'll show listeners when we're live and when we're not and then attracts if we only want this player to show our previous tracks that have played we can use this iframe here each of them have their own code and their own pretty much script that you would upload to your website to pretty much see or listen to your stream we're gonna go to player builder next player builder pretty much allows us to create our own custom player so in widgets we have all ones ones already created and now player builder allows us to customize the text color progress bar different options like main image listeners things like that we're all going to be able to customize here and at the very top it's going to generate the code or the script and then we would upload that to our website now statistics is very important and a very popular feature a lot of clients like to use this option this is basically going to give us the details of all of the listeners of our station their ips their countries where they're listening to right now we can see for example we had a listener today from their macbook listening from mozilla firefox to our station it'll give us the amount of average session length for example let's say we have listeners that are listening to four hours plus of our station we're going to see that here the total the popularity percentage and we're going to have here a graph that's going to fill up as we go and as we begin gaining listeners very top we're going to see here the main statistics the total listeners limits the total listener hours total listener sessions bandwidth usage unique listeners countries tracks unique tracks and sessions and pretty much at the very top we can select and we can hide this and we can actually activate it like this we can select the last 15 days from certain days or from months and all channels or the ones we created at the very top so let's say we only want to see the statistics for the mp3 128 link we created if that's my radio you click that and it'll pretty much update us with only the statistics from that channel we created lastly billing and limits just goes into a little more detail on what our plan has to offer how many stations we can create the channels we can create our listeners limit the bit rate we have maximum available to us our disc quota and our traffic per month then logs basically just shows us the IP of the user logging into the dashboard for our end. Pretty much, let's say you have a team of broadcasters and they're all logging in. This will show you their information there. And lastly, my profile is basically a little video or not a video, sorry, a dashboard page, which allows us to change our profile icon, our avatar, our email, our time zone, and pretty much you have the option to reset password. So hopefully this video helped. Thanks so much for watching. In the next few videos, we're going to be showing you detailed how to use each of these options. But in this video, we wanted to mainly focus on exactly what each option is available to us and how they work and things like that. If you have any questions, you can feel free to reach us at everestpanel.com. We'll be happy to help. Thanks so much for watching and you have a great day.